As of 10 p.m., the National Hurricane Center's latest advisory does show a slight weakening in intensity for Hurricane Milton as those wind speeds are now down to 165 miles an hour, still gusting into the 200 mile per hour range, and the movement has slowed down just a little bit. So that is not necessarily what you want, but the pressure has come up, and that is a good sign. We continue to see a 914 millibar pressure earlier during the 7 p.m. advisory. This storm only had two more millibars than and Rita, which holds the record for the lowest pressure ever seen before in the Gulf of Mexico. So we continue with the Category 5 classification. Tomorrow, this is still going to maintain intensity, though likely drop down to 160 mile per hour winds with that Category 5 classification. Then on Wednesday, as this continues to progress a little further east and move into a slightly less favorable environment with drier air and more wind shear, we should see those winds knock down to 145 miles an hour, which is that Category for classification as it continues to push towards Florida's western coastline. We'll see that 125 mile per hour category three downgrade. So it will likely make landfall as a major hurricane and the time frame still appears to be very late Wednesday into the overnight hours on Thursday as it progresses further inland. So Tampa as well as Orlando down to Fort Myers dealing with hurricane warnings flying. You see those tropical storm warnings on either side of the cone and that means these conditions are set to unfold within the next 48 hours. Still, hurricane watches and tropical storm watches well inland and off towards the eastern coastline of Florida. All of the models consistently honing in on Tampa as the landfall location and the angle this is coming from is going to bring that heightened storm surge threat for somewhere between 10 and 15 feet of surge within the Tampa Bay itself. So we continue to see those surge amounts very considerable all the way north to the Big Ben and south to Key West, even two to five miles inland, you're going to continue with a concern for those winds in the category three to category four range. This is going to really pack its punch as it makes landfall hitting the coast with all of that strength moving inland. So we continue to see the winds somewhere between about 75 and 110 miles an hour close to Orlando. And then of course at the landfall site, more like category three status with 110 plus mile per hour sustained winds, the gust even higher than that. And then on top of this, you're going to have the five to 10 inch range rainfall threat, which is not necessarily going to be that much higher than a foot in most spots. But think about that on top of the already 10 to 15 foot storm surge. That's where you're seeing those preparations in place across the board for mandatory evacuation orders. So of course we here close to home not dealing with much weather at all. We've seen temperatures just a little bit higher than normal for this time of year. 84 is our traditional high. 89 was our high today and we continue with that cool front pushing further south at the moment. It should arrive here around midnight. So in just about an hour and 40 minutes and that's we're going to see temperatures start to fall off a little bit and then less humidity as well across the board. So the next seven days really do look fantastic as we head into especially the weekend and beginning of next week. Otherwise, the coastal flood advisory is our most active element of the forecast. We continue with that until 7 a.m. on Tuesday. It means you'll see those tides one to two feet above ground from their normal place during high tide itself. Here's that seven day forecast. We continue with wall to wall sunshine overnight temperatures a little more fall like in the 60s, somewhere between those low 60s and the eventual upper 50s as we head towards your weekend. Lots of sunshine. Nonetheless, rain chances essentially non existent until we get into the very beginning of next week.